Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrapcraftastic, and I'm going to recover this notes organizer book from Dollar Tree. This is the one that I started using as a daily. And so far, the pen is very similar to what I would get with the other Dollar Tree planner. The one that is a horizontal weekly. It's about five by seven size. Um, but yeah, there is a little shadowing there. And that was using, I'm going to do a full uh, pen test, but that was using this Pilot G207. Okay, so I will do a full pen test. Uh, I'll just use one of the pages in the back and do that. So, but to, for today, I am going to cover this and hopefully that's going to give it a little more sturdiness. So to do um, this, I'm going to need this 1 8 inch hole punch. I'm going to need, of course, the paper that I want to cover it with and some type of glue. That's basically it. And a way to cut the paper if you need to cut it. All right, so I'm taking a piece from this paper pad from Michaels. I think this is one of the last ones that I bought because I think this is the one with tons of filler paper that really wasn't worth it. But this is what this one looks like. It's called Magical Woodland. And it has three pages of each design. As you can see, it has a lot of plain card stock in here. So I'm not sure what they were going for with that, but so that's the paper pad that I pulled from. This is the piece that I'm going to use, I think. And the reason I'm going with this is because it's very subtle, simple, it's dark. So if I have any mishaps around the edges, it won't show as much. And also it lends itself to be able to cover it with something else or to layer on it, if you know what I mean. So what I've done, I took a piece of clear packaging and I made sure it was the same size pretty much as the cover of this notebook. And I just kind of folded the flap down to make it the right width. And then I'm going to use that to find where exactly I want to cut on this paper. I know there's glare, but let's see. So yeah, I think I want to cut it right about there so that the dark edge will be on the edge where the spiral is. I am going to mark it with a pencil. And I know the measurements because I measured carefully, even though it says six by eight and a half. When I measured, I got five and seven eighths by eight and a half. So I guess when they cut it, you know, they do these in bulk. They probably just cut a little off. Oh, one ever other thing. <laughs> Very important. So if you saw the video where I did the daily page setups, there is an extra page. It's a blank little flimsy page. I need that page out so that I can note on my cover where to punch. And I have to take this out very carefully. I did not bring my B scissors in. Let's see if I can use these sewing scissors that I got from Your Creative Studio. So I'm just gonna carefully snip. This is very awkward for me. But I'm going to try and carefully snip these. Make sure I'm only on one page. These scissors act like they don't want to cut. They're real sharp and pointy. But they're not doing a very good job. Let's try these. So we got that off. Let's go ahead and trim down the paper to the size that we need. So 
so that looks about right all right so i'm going to put this on the back of the paper hopefully i'll still be able to see and then i'm going to take a pencil and just draw where those punches need to be and is this straight it's mostly straight Now, if you're good with this kind of thing, you could just put a little dot, but I like to put a circle so that I can specifically line up the punch. Now, those dots look real, real crooked. Is this paper cut crooked? Let's try that again. I'm gonna erase them and start over because they do not look straight. And this time, I'm gonna make sure my paper is straight on that edge. Um, let's put a paper clip on. That might help hold everything together. So nothing slides around because this paper is a little slippery. Let's try that again. All right, so the key to this is making sure those holes are in the right place before you start punching. I'm not sure where I got this from, this 1 8 inch punch. I'm thinking that I got it from Hobby Lobby, but I don't know that for a fact. I've had it for a long, long time. And it probably needs sharpening also because when I was testing it earlier, it wasn't really cutting Oh, it's doing better on this. Maybe it was because the paper was thin that I tested it on. So let's see if I can get this as straight as possible. It would be great if it had a, a guide on it like the crocodile does. But it doesn't. This is 1 8 inch. We made it. Let me erase my pencil marks. It's a little wonky, but I'm not a machine. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna just go and snip. Kind of like we did when we removed this page, just snip in the side a little hair until you reach the hole. This is a lot like the way you um, do punches for a disc bound. If you don't have a disc bound punch, you use a hole puncher, a regular standard hole puncher, and then you cut the slits and pop it on the disc. Same concept. So that's what's gonna happen here. And I know my paper is a little weird, but we're gonna work with it. And again, the reason I chose a dark color is in case like around the edge here show it you know it matches the paper um i am going to ink this edge up a little bit all right so i have um black soot distress ink you can use any ink i'm just going to try and be really careful not to damage these little pieces just to get rid of some of that white all right that's done. Where's the scrap paper? I'm going to use my scrap paper and I'm going to run over this lightly with a glue stick. This part is optional. You don't have to do this, um, but I kind of want these little pieces to stay in place. I don't want them flopping around and pulling up as with use. Okay. So that you don't have to do, but I'm doing it. And then I'm just gonna start popping these on, trying to line it up. Since I got glue on that part. And let's see, maybe I can use my tweezers for this part. 
press it down let's get this lined up a little bit better i don't even know if the the glue stick is going to help with that but if not and they start pulling up i can always come back with my see it's not cut right yikes i can come back with a different glue later all right so now that that's done i can glue the rest of it down i don't think i need that anymore i can glue the rest of it down however i want let's just try not to pull that part up i'm gonna just go ahead and add the glue to this part and i know i'm lifting up my other part but i'm using glue stick and then I'm going to go around the edges with my art glitter glue. It seems awfully watery today. What's going on with that? All right. I think I'd rather it line up on this part outside and not worry too much about what's going on with the spiral. Look at that. How off that is. So let's straighten this up. Careful not to cut the cover. Let's use the blade for this. I could have checked to make sure that this cover was gonna fit on there properly, but I didn't wanna put it on and weaken those little prong pieces. So that's why I didn't, but next time I probably will. Let's see if I can use the blade to get this right. Then that little piece I can cut. And we should be good. All right, let's take my card. If I can find it. Try not to pull too much, but make sure all of that's pressed down really well. And then that's the cover. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's done now. I could always go back and cover it again, but I don't think I want to. Let's see, there was a journaling card I wanted to possibly look at using on the cover. Let me look at those. Okay. So I can choose life is better in a forest or fly free. I don't know. I think I need something smaller. This is just too big. It's gonna cover up the whole forest scene. Even if I cut it down to just the card size. All right, I'm gonna have to think about that for a bit, but that's what it looks like. It looks much better than what was there before. So I'm cool with that. All right, I am back. So I went and laid down for a little while because I'm not feeling that great. I have been having issues off and on since last month. I think I mentioned that before. Anyway, while I was laying there <laughs> thinking about this project, I was like, why didn't I think of this before? Let's do a reloadable pocket cover. That way I can change the cover and make it look like whatever I want it to be whenever I want to change it. So I got another one of those little baggy things, um, product bags, and I've marked it with my marker where I want to cut it and hopefully I can get my pepper trimmer to cut straight. Maybe I should just use the blade because I'm tired of dealing with that paper trimmer <laughs> right now. So I'm going to trim this and it doesn't matter that I'm going to open up this side because once I laminate it, I'm going to laminate it. Um, it's going to seal those sides up anyway. So it doesn't matter. Um, what I did, I need to put this up somewhere so it doesn't get damaged. What I did is kind of put it where I wanted everything to line up and then marked it with the marker so I want it to I don't want to go over the coils because I'm gonna have some excess where I don't want to cut into the bubble once it's laminated I want to have a little excess to poke my holes and 
uh, make it so that it will go on to the spiral. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so that's what we're doing now because this is just a little too blah for me. I thought I would like it and be able to embellish it, but I'm, I still like it, but I think it would be better on the inside. Okay, so let me get my ruler. And I'm going to use my mat to line this up and hope for the best when I cut it. The good thing about this is I do have another one if I mess it up. So no worries there. And I could probably just use the X-Acto knife, but let's use this. <laughs> I need to get more comfortable with using it. So, so I lined everything up. I'm going to line my ruler up on here. Straight as I can get it. And then I'm cutting on this side that's open just to get that adhesive. Oh, this is a bad cut. Okay. Yeah, that cut wrong. Um, I'm cutting on that side so that I can cut this adhesive part off. So maybe I am going to have to use my Cricut paper trimmer. I think this plastic is too thin. To work with the blade so let's try that again I'm just gonna cut off the little bit that got hung up yeah I have to hold that down tight okay so paper trimmer it is let's hope for the best we're getting things straight I can't wait till I am back to normal because this is too much. It's interfering with what I want to do. <laughs> I don't like that. Okay. This is a five mil uh, pouch that I just crinkled up a little bit. So I'm not going to put it all the way to the edge. All right. So I have been warming up the laminator. Let's get that over here. It says it's hot. Okay, also one thing that I've learned when you're, well, I guess I need this again. When you're doing the product bags, you want to put, just like you put the sealed end of the laminate in first, you also want to put the sealed end of the um, product bag in first. So, I don't know. I think that helps with air bubbles. Um, let's go ahead and trim this up. I'm lining it up to the white edge. I'm doing the top and bottom first. I don't know if I want my pocket to open on the top or the side. It could even open on the bottom. Let's have it open on the side. I'm just gonna go ahead and break that seal. So I'm just going to line up the bubble. Let's see if I can see it better here. Right on the edge of where the blade is going and cut. Did that work? Yes. Okay. So now we have a pocket. And we can put whatever decorative paper we want in there. So with that done, I need to figure out where I want to cut this edge. So I'm going to let this hang over just a hair. The top and the bottom are going to hang over just a hair. All right, and so this is where we'll punch. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if it's showing up. So I didn't cut up close to the air bubble, I left space so that I can punch that. And it might be a little too much space because you're gonna be able to see behind it. But since we already have a nice paper behind it, I think it'll be okay. The reason that's happened is because I didn't allow for it to hang over the edge on this side. I can always use it for the back if I don't like it. So now we do the holes.
this time I'm going to do the dot method because I can't pencil in the circle and I don't want to pencil it in with this permanent marker. I think it's permanent. And start punching the holes. Let's make them easier to see because <laughs> I can't see them against the metal. Ooh, it's going to be hard. Let's go ahead and cut these. The moment of truth. Let's turn this off. Okay, it worked. It's got a little wrinkle right there. I probably need, could benefit from running it through the laminator again, but it worked. So now, if I wanna change the way the cover looks, I just slide a piece of scrapbook paper in there. Or my own design, or you could use your own stickers, on um, some acetate, if you want like a clear cover, like that. I could do some florals on a piece of, actually I could just lamin and do another piece of lamination, cut it to size to fit in this little window. Oh, that would be cool. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And it feels so much more sturdy and secure. Now let's do something for this back because it needs help. Now, and also before I go any further, I need to round these corners. Let's start with the small one. It just takes a little teeny bit off so that I won't be poking myself. Pull this off a little bit. And the cool thing, this isn't permanent. You can take it off. I wonder if I can change the coil and put a, a better coil on here. So I'm nervous about this coil. But that's what it looks like. Okay. I'm going to make one for the back. And then I'll see what I want to do next. Okay, so what I did different on this one, I allowed for more space for the overhang. So I think that will be better because I do want it to hang over just a bit. Well, I'm going to hang it over a lot more. Then I can trim it as I need because I need this to be right here. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. So I'm going to trim this right in the middle of my mark let's do this again
Oh, you know what? I have that heavy duty. We are memory keepers punch. <gasps> and it has one eighth inch. Okay, let's try this. Maybe it won't hurt my hand so much. <laughs> okay, I keep forgetting I, I have this. I think I got it on clearance somewhere. If you've been watching for a while and you remember, let me know where I got it from. Oh, but I can't see the holes in here. The little dot. It's too dark. Maybe if I hold it up like this. Huh? I could probably get it to work. But it's too fiddly. I'll just suffer through with this one because it's too it's too hard to see the dot through the we are memory keepers and that's probably a me problem all right <laughs> three more and we're done now these are a little closer to the edge and not as straight as the other ones. <laughs> I think my hands are protesting. All right, let's do this. Oh, that one didn't even come all the way off. Cut these slits. Go ahead and round the corners before I put it on. Oh, let's wait on those corners. I might have to trim it again. I definitely need to trim it again. Let's try right there. So I think this one is going to go on the front. Maybe. Okay, let's put this on. I think I made this one smaller, unfortunately. Maybe I should have cut them both at the same time. That probably would have been better. But that is what that looks like. Front, back. So all we need to do now is figure out what we're gonna do for the insert. So since this is running a bit long, I think I'm gonna stop there while I decide what I'm gonna put in these pockets. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think about these covers, doing this style of cover for this notebook. I think it protects it. You could even pop an eyelet or something or punch in this part here and add a closure. So if you're taking it in a bag or something that it will stay closed and your papers won't end up wrinkled up just an idea or you could put an elastic around the end i doubt the the big hair ties from dollar tree would work because they're too big but maybe you could double wrap i don't know anywho that is it let me know what you think i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up and you may be interested in this other video thanks for watching and i'll talk to you later bye